Hello YouTube friends and hopefully new Scala enthusiasts. This time we can get on a little faster than last time because we got all the basics sorted out, so I will read the next problem from Project Euler to you. Problem 2. Each new term in the Fibonacci sequence is generated by adding the previous two terms. By starting with 1 and 2, the first 10 terms will be 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and so on. By considering the terms in the Fibonacci sequence whose values do not exceed 4 million, find the sum of the even-valued terms. This should be a pretty easy one to do, so Robin, let's head to the bat cave. There we are, the natural habitat of the programmer, the source code editor. As you can see, I've already created uh, an object in which we can put our code and copied the, the problem description into it so you can always see it. Now um, I will start again by making the strange Java solution and then show you how things get easier when you use Scala. So I will first program it in the Java-like way. Let's add a main method once more. There we are. Uh, we need the last two terms of the Fibonacci sequence. It's not enough to just memorize the last term of the Fibonacci sequence throughout our loop because we need the one before that to make the sum of the last two terms. So I will define two variables which uh, I will call a uh, which starts at 1 and b which starts at 2. Those are like the seed numbers for uh, the rest of the Fibonacci sequence. We also need another variable for counting the sum. Uh, this of course starts at 0 and now uh, we will make a while loop, much like you do in Java, while a is smaller than 4 million. Uh, now curly brackets for the body of the while loop. Um, the first thing we do is we check if a is uh, even. The remainder with 2 is 0. In that case we increase the sum by a. Otherwise we do nothing. Now to ensure that the loop goes on, we gotta uh, give the new values for a and b. Um, we got a problem here because we gotta assign the value of b to a, and we have to assign uh, the sum of a and b to b. So we gotta swap variable temporarily. Um, as you can see, I've defined it as a val, not a var. Uh, that's because it's basically a final variable, you can say in Java terms, which means uh, its value is assigned only once and never changed. Um, because vals are used much more often in Scala than in Java, you have such a, a short convenient notation for them. So the swap variable, let's say, is a. So we can assign a new value now safely to a. Uh, and uh, this will, of course, be b, which is the next term of the Fibonacci sequence. And B needs to be A plus B. No, I'm sorry, A has changed, so I need to do a swap here. Yeah. Uh, and in the end, we gotta print out the result. There you go. Now, uh, if you don't know the assigned task, the problem of Project Euler, uh, then I think it's kind of hard to look at this code and immediately understand what it does and the sequence that it, it enumerates. However, we have no other chance in uh, imperative programming than to write it like this because we need two variables, a and b, that need to change their values constantly so we need to reassign them uh, and we need to build the sum. So we need a variable for that too. And we can't get around all of these instructions. Every single instruction here is really necessary. Um, let me compile this quick. Now yeah, the compiler was happy and now again uh, we will run our code. Yeah, this is a quite a big number. It's over 4 million. I can tell you uh, that this um, solution is correct. If you wish, you can look it up in Project Euler. But still, this program leaves a bad taste in my mouth because there are so many lines uh, which do 
very simple things and in order to understand what the whole of the code does you need to aggregate all of those simple things in your head. There are no, no higher level abstractions so to say. There's one thing you can do to um, uh, declare A and B in one shot. This is a combined assignment. You can declare them as a tuple and then assign their value as a tuple. I'm sorry. Uh, in theory, you could also include the sum here, like this. You could simply write comma sum, and then here comma zero. But I don't like it because I think, for me, the sum is something different than A and B, and A and B are something alike to each other because they are just two elements of the same sequence. So I like to bundle it like this. That's pretty much everything you can do um, in imperative style. Now. I will show you the solution um, we can find in functional style programming. It's really much different, so I have to remove all of this code. Now, um, the first thing we want to do is we want to define the Fibonacci sequence not as a limited while loop, but as it is, as an infinite sequence of numbers. An infinite sequence in Scala is, of course, a stream. Uh, we already encountered a stream in the previous example. Uh, so we got to define a method which I will call fib and it returns a stream of integers. As I told you, a stream is somewhat similar to a list, but its elements are only calculated when necessary, so they are not kept in memory. And the previous uh, assignment we had a stream of, uh, I think, uh, up to 1,000 numbers. There, it could have been possible to keep all of them in memory. It's not that tragic. Uh, however, for an infinite stream, it's impossible to keep it in memory. So it's very important that the values are only calculated on demand. Uh, one thing you might notice is that I've left out the braces for the arguments. Because when the argument list is empty, you can choose whether you want to include the empty argument list like this, or want to leave it out. If you leave it out, and only then the caller of your method will have the option of also leaving out the braces when calling the method, and thereby having a syntax similar to referring to a member variable. I will show you that later. So for now, I leave them out. So how do we d define the stream of Fibonacci sequence? Um, we do it recursively, of course. and um, so we will have a method which is which I an internal method which I will call recurse. Uh, it gets some parameters and then it returns a stream of integers. I leave the definition open for now, and I will show you how we intend to use this method. We will simply call it with the first two elements of the Fibonacci sequence, and the recurse method will return a stream containing these two elements and all the rest. Now, we already can uh, say which arguments the recurse takes, because I've just defined out. It takes two integers, like this. And now, uh, there is a way of creating a stream out of the stream's first element, and another stream, which is the rest, following the first element. So, this method is in the stream type, and it's called cons. If you come from a functional programming language, like for example Lisp, you will already know the cons word. It's uh, short for concatenation. So we basically concatenate something. The cons method takes two arguments, the first one being the first element of the stream, which is obviously A, and the second one is not the second element of the stream, but a stream uh, containing all the rest of the elements. Now, where do we get a stream which uh, gives us all uh, but, the first of the, uh, but the first element of the Fibonacci sequence, namely 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on? Yeah, we just define a method like this. It's called recurse. And uh, instead of passing an A and B, we give the next two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, which are B and A plus B. Yeah, so now in theory, this is a nice definition of the Fibonacci sequence. 
However, when you come from a Java background, um, you will have um, <coughs> uh, one problem with it. I will come to that uh, in a moment. Uh, I just see that I've made a mistake. The recursive method is, of course, called recurse, not fib. There you go. Um, now, <coughs> if you come from a Java background, you will notice that the second argument of the, recur of the cons method is recurse b, a plus b, um, which will be evaluated when the co before the cons method is called. And since it is recursive and calls itself again over and over, this evaluation will never stop. When this was were Java code, then um, the, the recurse method would recurse forever. However, in Scala, things are a little different. Um, the cons method is declared in a certain way. You can look it up if you wish in the Scala doc. Um, it's declared in such a way that a is a, the, the first argument is a regular parameter. And uh, when I give uh, some expression here, then this expression will be evaluated before the parameter is passed on to the method. However, um, the second parameter is declared in a very special way. It's called a lazy parameter. This one is not evaluated before the method is called. It's actually passed on as a kind of closure to the method and only evaluated once the method uses its value. When the method which is called never uses the value, it will never be evaluated. That's called a lazy parameter. Uh, I will not show you how to declare this. You can do this with your own methods if you wish. You can declare lazy parameters. Um, for now, you just got to accept that um, the second parameter of the cons method is only evaluated when needed. This is very important. Now, what we got is a nice declaration of the Fibonacci stream. And uh, what we got to do is now, I want to print out something. And for that something, we take the Fibonacci sequence. But as the assignment says, we want to only consider the even value terms for which we use the filter method, like in our previous example. But now we want to uh, filter out uh, only the uh, even value uh, terms. Um, I will again start with the long version, um, which says uh, x is an integer, is assigned to a Boolean, namely x remainder 2 equals 0. Now this produces as a result a stream which only contains the even valued Fibonacci elements. <coughs> but still it's an infinite stream. Um, if I were now, for example, to say sum here, then the call to sum would never end would eventually get into a stack overflow. Uh, so we need to put a limit. We need to um, make a stream that has an end. Um, I will get to that in the next video. For now, I have to make a break in this video because of the length of YouTube videos.